Okay, soldering and gearbox. I said in a previous video I was going to use this, which is a high level kits Roadrunner Plus gearbox. Uh, I think it's 54 in 1. I used it quite a few times, I like it very much. But somebody on our own web who bought one of my kits, the same chassis, the older version, the same thing, basically said that um, it works better with a different combination. He showed me a photograph and it said it fits easier, and so I've took his advice. It indeed looks a lot better. So to that end, I've got myself one of these, or two of them, which is a 15-in-1 London Road Models motor mount. Okay, With that, you buy the, the grub screw and the worm. Well, no, no that's, that's, that's not true. They come with grub screws, don't they? That's a worm, that's a gear with grub screws. So, it's cheaper, it's going to fit the chassis better, it's obviously quicker to build, and if you've never built one before, it should be easy in theory, because there's less to do. There's no instructions, it's that simple. So with etches, usually the consensus is, unless instructions say otherwise, half etched lines mean you fold them inwards. Now with soldering, I'm not a super expert, but I've been doing it enough years uh, for modelling, and it's quite simple. People think it's complex, it's not. You just have to get certain things in combination. As long as you get the right uh, flux, solder, metal and heat, all in combination, it's hard to go wrong, it really is. Right, for this, I'm just going to use what's known as detailing solder, just cars 145 melt. A lot of people actually make the kits with this stuff. Okay, I've got a variable iron, you don't have to use one. But this, this soldering iron goes to uh, 200 to 450 degrees centigrade. And I'm having about 350. I'm just going to adjust it a second. Yeah, there you go. If you, have it like, if you have it nice and hot, then instead of spending ages just dwelling and hoping it warms up, you don't, you literally just touch it, pss, done. So, um, oh yeah, the flux, yes. Now I usually use this one. For most brass and nickel silver, I use Cars Green Flux. Very good, obviously very dangerous as well. Um, it's very corrosive though, so if you, you can solder steel with it, but you have to wash it thoroughly after. Now when I'm doing this, what if I'm doing electrical joints or anything where there's steel around, like these tie rims for instance, I prefer to use this stuff instead. DCC Concepts, Flux, it's Sapphire. It's not, it's not the, it's the red one, so this one's a scrubbed out. Sapphire No Clean Flux, usable for general use, and DCC Concepts, SS Rail, I suppose it means solid steel, I don't know. But you can use it for several things, obviously. So I have to keep that out. Um, right, let's just get on with it. Let me just get my set square. This is a bit awkward because the camera's in the way, but I'll do the best I can. The sponge has been soaked in water. Little tabs, you can use a set of uh, etch shears, but these, if you're not careful, if, if they get a bit old especially, they can bend the etch, so a lot of time I just prefer to put a knife through it, just a few strokes. It's a good way of blunting knives as well. If you don't feel comfortable doing this, you can always get a nice thick standy blade instead. I'm just being idle. Oh, try the shears takes more passes there you go and this is easier but like I said it's a bit risky sometimes you can bend the edge if you're not careful the fact that I weakened it probably made it easier uh, they have washers I'll keep them for later now you got obviously the cusps so just file them off if you use a beefy file, it makes life a lot quicker. Don't press too hard because you don't want to bend it either.
probably unnecessary, but I always like to get a bit of sort of sandy emery paper or something afterwards. Just makes me feel a bit safer. Yep, feels nice. Now, my guess is going to be that these 1 8th top hat bones that came with it are not going to fit. That's my guess because I know usually etched holes are made smaller. So we'll try it. They usually go on the inside, so. And there you go. Too tight. Okay, that's expected. Now, if you remember these, these are the reamers, but that's a 1 8th taper reamer we need again. So, it's pretty generous. I definitely need to open that a bit more though. Okay. Bit of glue. Yep, cool. Pretty much a perfect fit. Now they will have to be soldered in. Let's just move this out of the way. It's only problem with modeling desks, they get a little bit messy. And they start to become a bit... You lose things, then you knock things over, it becomes a bit dangerous. Right, you have to find a brush you don't want no more. And sacrifice it forever. Once it touches flux, that's it. You're finished. Okay, so whoop, a little ring there and a little bit there. In fact, plan B. If you feel like wearing gloves or something, that's up to you. I just don't bother. Like anything, I'm not necessarily showing you the safest way of doing stuff, I'm just showing you how I go about it. Don't make the mistake I've made several times, I seem to be a slow learner. Like when you've been doing this for a while, you might have an itch on your lip, and then you go to rub it with your hand. And then you find out you feel like your to tongue's literally dissolving as if you just burnt it on a pot noodle. Because you've got a flux in there. Um, don't do that. Right. Uh, one more point, one more point. Right, I got a blob on the end. Now you've got the bearing in place. Just put it on the edge. Blow the fumes away from you. <laughs> Should be able to just spin it slightly. Oh, I'll just turn the iron up actually. That's not mounting as quick as it usually does. I like it to be almost instant. a bit more of this. <laughs> um, sometimes you can spin the bearing gently. Wait a while until it changes colour. It should go like an opaque colour rather than shiny, which it's just about done. Um, Again, I've got this focusing issue. Right, you see a thick bit around the edge, you can always clean it up with a file later, it doesn't matter. On the other side, it should have come through slightly, which it has done. 
just a teeny bit. Usually it means it's a good joint. So we've just got to do the same. I'm sold to people normally do tap joints, but again, when you're just putting a bearing in, it's a bit pointless. Yep, that's done. Okay. Hopefully, you can see how easy that was. I put this away. Now, I'm going to bend that. Um, I probably don't need the square for this. If you get your pliers, put them close to the line. Like that, you just bend it 90 degrees. Yep, use a square if you want to. I don't find it's necessary with gearboxes, there's a little bit of play you can have in them. That's good enough to me. Now what I do again, I'll just put the flux away, haven't I? To get it back out, get it back out. Woo! See, you've got all these little hazards. Might be an idea to do this. Blue tack and put your glue or something in a pot. I haven't got around to it with this bowl because there's a new bottle. Anyway, you don't want to go up those three holes, but if you just put a little bit in there, it's probably too much. Take a bit off. Just put a strengthening bit in. Hear that nice little hiss? So satisfying. Like that, it put a nice thick bit in the corners. It just reinforces the strength. Okay. So we've got this far. Um, now there's some spacey washers here, spacing washers. I'm not sure whether they're supposed to go on the inside, I'm presuming so. But I'm just going to get the motor out. See how we get on. This is a Mishima 1020. I'm not saying it's the right size motor to use. It's kind of... It was a calculation and experiment. You've got to be careful because you've got these little screws here. You don't want to lose them. So, maybe one back in the bag for a minute. In fact, no, I'm going to put them just there. Uh, get my baby set of screwdrivers out. Go straight for the smallest one. I'm going to get my little pot of grease. Whoop. Bit of gunge. It's going to have to pick up this screw. Nice bit of gunge on the end. It just. Stick it in as square as you can, and it shouldn't fall off. Right. Now, chances are these holes will be too small. Oh, no, that's perfect fit. And that's a perfect fit. Blimey! No reaming necessary. Brilliant. Okay. So, time to get the motor on, which is awkward. It's pretty simple. You've got to just line the holes up, pretty much. Some motors you can put, depends what the mount's like, but with this one, 
Pretty straightforward. There's no getting a uh, there's no getting around it. it this is fiddly. So I, all I can say is the more experience the better. What I find is if you put it through the gearbox first or motor mount, whatever you want to call it. Okay. So it's like that. Yeah, and they lost it. Yeah. Probably doesn't help when you've got sausage fingers either. Yep. He's fiddly, isn't it? Right, we got it. Don't do it too tight. Just enough so you can position the other piece. Right, we're done. Okay. Now, put your grub screw on pretty much. Keep calling it a grub screw, don't I? Your worm, even. Stick the worm on. Always check the screws, the grub screws are in there though. Yep, that's got one. Yep. In case I get left in the bag. Now how far to put this on? I'm not totally sure yet. You have to undo the screw. Some motors don't have, or some gearboxes and gears don't have grub screws, you have to lock tight them. Depends what you buy, what you use. Just gonna tighten that up. Yep. Right. Now the idea is it's gonna fit in this way. Like that. So I'm just going to pull the back wheel off and I'll be back in a second. 